and win. Ah, so that's the strategy. Thanks, Ann. Unfortunately, that strategy didn't pan out for Quincy in the first round of our best two out of three. Lakewood took the win, 46 to 31. Maybe Quincy will have better luck here in round two. As we join the action, Lakewood's too easy two is red, and Quincy's Spectrum is looking for those yellow balls. Lakewood's drivers look a little bit worried. And what's the problem? Oh, too easy two gets caught up in one of its red three-pointers. This could be a real break for Quincy. This is trouble for Lakewood. Lakewood's madly trying to spin their wheels. I don't know, that doesn't look good. Oh, no, wait, wait, they get free. Yes, too easy. Two breaks away and heads for a large ball to make up for lost time. Quincy's piling up the three-pointers as Lakewood hits with a 10-pointer. You can hear the countdown. Three, two, there's the buzzer. The question is, who won? That's what the crowd wants to know. So do we, while we wait for the referee's count and a Lakewood timeout. And let's visit with the Lakewood team at their home in St. Petersburg, Florida. Lakewood High School's library doubles as their in-house playing field. They've learned lessons here that you can't learn in books. All right, let's do it. Not only did we learn what an engineer was like, what engineering is like, but with the cooperation that eSystems has given us, we actually for two months became engineers, I think would be the best way to describe it. It's, just, it's as close as you can come without actually having a degree and getting a job. Martin and his teammates learned that engineers are always testing and refining their designs. Take their first idea for a claw. We tried to make one that would pick up the small balls like this and the large ball in the other part of it like that. As any typical all-purpose tool, it did both fair, but uh, it didn't do either one very well. So we changed the configuration, eliminated the small ball capability, extended that distance to where it grabbed this ball better. This wasn't something you could do in one night. You had to actually start doing it ahead of time. And when you start doing it ahead of time, it came out real nice. The Lakewood students also learned lessons about themselves. Three years ago, if I would have called my dad at 9 o'clock at night and said, Dad, I'm in E-Systems working on the robot, he would have been like, yeah, right, where are you? You know, he wouldn't have believed me. And at the beginning of this, they didn't believe me. I started realizing how important these years are for my later years, that, you know, I need to work hard now and I need to get my life on track if I want to do anything. And that's the true spirit of U.S. First. I changed a lot more than I, like it appeared I did, but I grew up a lot more. And I think my parents have realized that. They trust me a lot more. Serena Kay, just one of the many U.S. First stories we've heard here today. Now for the results of the last round. Whoever said the little things don't count up for much wasn't thinking of Quincy Public Schools. By scoring all their small balls for a total of 36 points, they took the second round. So we're all tied up as we head into the rubber match. Both machines go for their small balls first, each using a roller design to gobble up and deliver those balls. That's a design that's proved very powerful here today. Oops, Yay. there goes one of Quincy's large balls and it's drivers off in hot pursuit right now. Also, keep in mind there's a weight limit of 120 pounds on all the machines here, and Quincy's machine was two pounds overweight. The crash diet they went on to get down to competition weight doesn't seem to have hurt them so far. That's Lakewood first, though, with one of the large balls heading for the edge of the field to fill up on the three-pointers, while Quincy begins its approach to the goal to try for a 10-point shot. It looks like they could both arrive at the same time. Look out! Who's going to get there first? Yellow, red, red, yellow, you choose. This could get interesting. While they're battling up top, down underneath, Lakewood's Too Easy 2 is unloading three more small balls. That's nine points. Are they locked in a standoff here? No! Quincy gets their 10-pointer down. Lakewood's is right behind. Quincy gets their ball, but now Lakewood's got them pinned. And now Quincy sets off in a desperate dash for its last 10-pointer as Lakewood is chasing. Now Lakewood's got them pinned, and they can't score. That was a good match. Lakewood is the clear winner, however, grabbing one of the bursts in the finals. When we come back, it's Edison Technical High School and Walnut Hills High battling for the final spot. And welcome back once again. Dan Debenham here at the U.S. First National Championships. We're in our second semifinals with Walnut Hills High School, partnered with Procter & Gamble going for the Red Balls. 
Edison Technical High partnered with Harris Corporation and RIT are after the yellow ball. Once again, the semifinals are a best two out of three format. And they are off. Both these robots are so beautifully engineered and their drivers are now so skilled that they're beginning to make this contest look relatively easy. Both have filled up with small balls. Edison delivers. Walnut Hills has got, whoa, they've got a yellow ball there and that could be costly. Check out Tiger Bolt going to pick up more three-pointers from its human teammate. Neatly done and wow, dashing to the goal and scoring. Now Walnut Hills, Operation Orange has picked up a large ball as well as its load of three-pointers. And trying to score, the question is, what will they do when that yellow ball comes around? Are they gonna just load it in? No, they're backing up. That's it, oh no! They lose their 10-pointer. Meanwhile, Edison's 10-pointer is in position and drops down. Now Operation Orange is back with its large ball. Edison's harassing them, but Walnut Hills shrugs off the challenge and does get the score. And now it's Operation Orange's turn to harass Tiger Bowl. But uh, again, it looks like, yes, offense will prevail over defense. Those Edison drivers appear unstoppable. And now they turn up their defense. Tiger Bowl shoves Operation Orange away from the goal. A last second attempt fails and Tiger Bolt's the winner, as are the students who built it. I wasn't going to class. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go. But before, before the Florida trip came, they told me I had a week to get my grades back up, and that's how my grades got back up, and I got out of trouble with uh, math and stuff like that. Good for you, man. Epcot Center is the epicenter of activity today, so let's get back to the action. Here we go with the second of the best two out of three matches. Two, one, go! Tiger Bolt moving smoothly into action as usual, gobbling up those three-pointers. On the other side of the field, Operation Orange is still picking up while Tiger Bolt is already delivering. Is this going to be a two-game sweep for Tiger Bolt? You gotta ask yourself, but wait, Operation Orange has grabbed their 10-pointer. They go for the goal. This is where that Walnut Hills machine has an advantage. Look at that, delivering its three-pointers, even while it's positioning its 10-pointer. Oh, man. That is a Michael Jordan kind of a slam dunk. Operation Orange is in the lead. Now Tiger Bolt comes back with its own 10-pointer. It gets that to go down, knocking Walnut Hills large ball right out into one of our cameras. Tiger Bolt's now going back for its other large ball. This machine is doing everything right. It really does seem unstoppable. You can count that as well. But now Operation Orange in a desperate last minute lunge pushes the goal across the field as it delivers more three-pointers at the same time. Now that's trapped. That's trapped behind the goal as the buzzer is about to sound. Tiger Bolt claims victory and is headed for the finals. 74 teams made the trip to Orlando and now only two remain. Lakewood High School partnered with E-Systems and Edison Technical High School teamed with Harris Corporation and RIT. When we return, it's the best two out of three for the 1996 U.S. First Hexagon Havoc Championship. Welcome back, everyone. Dan Debenham here, along with a crowd of over 3,500 at Epcot Center. Walt Disney World awaiting the finals of the 1996 U.S. First Championships. And while we have a moment, let's take a look back at some of the highlights of this very exciting day. Yes, we're into the finals, and here's a recap of round one, then, of the best of two out of three between Lakewood High and Edison Technical. In the early going, Lakewood's Too Easy Two got its claw caught on the ropes, preventing them from scoring. 
and costing them the round. That's a tough way to begin the finals. 